Hey there, Swim Boom, and since you guys seem to really like my top 10 misconceptions about Battlefield from Call of Duty players video, I decided to do a top 5 misconceptions about Call of Duty from Battlefield players just in the spirit of fairness. So let's start off with misconception number one. Misconception number one is campers. Now, there hasn't been a camper infestation in Call of Duty probably since Black Ops 1. Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, and Ghosts actually moved pretty quickly. And I don't have to speak for Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3. There's just not a lot of camping. There's no real practicality to it. Ghosts, out of all of the new games, are, is probably the most campy. But honestly, campers and ghosts are just easy targets. But the days of people sitting up in rooms with claymores behind them as they snipe down below, those are pretty much over. So I really don't know why this misconception is still around and it's still a running joke that Call of Duty players just sit in tents all day calling each other faggots. I don't get that. It's not really a camper's paradise anymore, and if anything, Battlefield's the bigger camper's paradise, and that's just a fact. Misconception number two is the most hypocritical, and that is that Call of Duty's killstreaks negate any skill because they get all your kills for you, and vehicles in Battlefield are so much better. This is one that really irritated me because there is a huge difference. There's almost no comparison. I, you know, I still stand by that these games should not be compared because they're entirely different. But if you're going to compare, and people are going to compare, I have to say, me getting 8 kills without dying, and that giving me some sort of kill streak or reward, is more important than you waiting and spawning in the helicopter faster than your teammate, and then getting up in the 25mm and mowing everybody down. I'm sorry, Call of Duty's kill streaks take more skill in the sense that you have to stay alive. And I'm going to tell you why that's hard in a second. Misconception number three ties in with misconception number two, and that is it's easy to get kills in Call of Duty. They're not rewarding, they're not hard to get, anybody can kill people in Call of Duty. Well, here is something that a lot of people don't think past. If it's easy to get kills in Call of Duty, then it's easy for everybody to get kills in Call of Duty, meaning it's easy for everybody to die, negating the first part. If it's just as easy for you to die as it is to get a kill, then it doesn't matter how easy it is to get a kill, because someone can kill you just as easily, okay? Do I need to reiterate that one more time? You can get a kill easily, meaning they can die easily, meaning they can kill you easily, meaning you can die easily. This is something that nobody thinks about. So, when people are getting kill streaks, they are playing a game where, yes, they can melt people with certain weapons, but they can be melted just as easily. All it would take is you dying by somebody going for a kill streak, you spawning, and then waiting with a head glitch. For that guy to come around the corner and then you get revenge on him, kill streak over. That's the way it works. So anytime somebody tells you that it's easy, kill streaks are easy and, and getting kills are easy, there's no reward to it, there's no skill to it, it's just handed to you, shake your head and be like, man, if it's easy for me to do it, it's easy for them to do it, negating how easy it is for me. I don't have extra health, my gun doesn't do extra damage, we are all pretty much on an equal playing field. Unless a weapon's unbalanced, and, well, I think Battlefield players know all about unbalanced weapons. Coming in at number four, this misconception has also irritated me. Maybe you guys have seen the jokes, the memes, the posts about how Call of Duty is full of kids. It was intended for an adult audience, but all that plays it are seven-year-olds. I would like to know, where are these seven-year-olds? I don't see them. In fact, when I think of, like, a 11 or 10-year-old doing something these days, it's probably watching Markiplier play No Man's Sky, or watching PewDiePie, or watching live streams, or, or looking at memes. Like, there's not a lot of kids that want to go compete in Call of Duty anymore. I don't see where these kids are. I don't get that. I have no idea where people are getting this information, but it, I'm sorry, it doesn't exist. The idea that Call of Duty is plagued by little children going, join my clan, join my clan, I want a quick scope, quick scopes only, quick scopes only. I, that, that is such an old stereotype, and it's usually from playing old Call of Duty games. If you go back and play an old Call of Duty game that's like, you know, 10 bucks at GameStop, then yeah, you're going to find more young people on it because that's more within their price range. So, no, there's no epidemic of little kids on Xbox Live going, I fucked your mom, I'm playing Call of Duty, oh, I'm going to get my kill streak. I'm like Nate Shot. I'm sorry, I don't see that anymore. If anything, every little kid is at home, on their phone, watching a YouTuber play some indie game or something. Because that's where we've come now. I wish there was more little kids on Call of Duty. They're fun to beat up on, and frankly, I just wish kids were not glued to YouTube. And I sound like an old man saying that, but I think there's some value in competition and 
Call of Duty and Battlefield and games like that have a lot of competition. I think if kids grow up with competition, it teaches valuable lessons. I like Jacksepticeye, but I don't think he teaches any valuable lessons. All of the misconceptions about Call of Duty are kind of funny because they're usually about the player base or the skill level required. And I think that's kind of funny because it's probably because everybody played Call of Duty. So yeah, they already got good at the game, so they, now they think it takes no skill because it takes no more of their skill. They're confident in it. They don't need to learn it anymore. And when it comes to little kids, it's probably because when most people started playing Call of Duty, they were really young. And then when they grew up, a lot of young people that they see, they're like, oh my god, it's all these kids. And it's just weird. It's always about the player base and the skill level required. This next one follows that trend. Misconception number five. And that is that Call of Duty is supposed to make you feel like a badass. And all I have to answer this idea that Call of Duty is really easy, anybody can pick it up, it's just supposed to make you feel cool, it, it, it gives you the illusion of winning, but you're really not, because the game wants you to win, and... Ah, uh, god, YouTubers like BD Dobbins have made this rumor loud and proud, like, they have screamed this from the rooftops, it's not really a rumor, I guess it's just an opinion, but, I don't know, I don't agree with it, I'm gonna play a clip, and I guess maybe just showing one clip to counter a whole argument is weak, but watch it anyway. Whew, I died pretty fast there. Let's play that back in slow motion. I miss one, two bursts, and I'm dead. Well, oh, boom, it's because you missed. That's why you died. That doesn't mean Call of Duty takes skill or anything. Every game comes down to fractions of seconds. And I go frame by frame. When I play my gameplay back, it's fun to like see how long it takes me to start shooting somebody once they've popped out at me. And in Battlefield, 27 frames. No joke. Call of Duty, 17 to, you know, 10 to 17 frames, and I already have my gun up shooting. That's how fast things go. Counter-Strike, Halo, all these games, they share one similar thing. They're all first-person shooters. They're all very different the way we play them, and that's, what we, that's why we play different ones. But if we wanted to use the nutshell argument in an pr appropriate place here, it's about shooting first. It's about aiming down sights and landing shots on your opponent before they land shots on you. And that's something that we should all learn when we start to compare shooters. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope I maybe debunked some of your misconceptions or maybe made you laugh or, I don't know, maybe this was a fun watch. Either way, I will see you when I see ya. Yeah. Goodbye! I recorded this four times. One time was horrible. One time got deleted. And this time I'm a little bit tired and I've, I really wasted a lot of my day on this video. And not saying making the video was a waste. I just mean I... Should have taken an hour, and it's been about three, so a lot of stuff went into this. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you when I see you.